Good afternoon everyone, my name's Tom Chapman. Uh, my background is industrial design. Um, this is my fourth presentation for the day, so I can see a few familiar faces in the audience. Excuse the fact that you have to listen to me again. I'll keep this short and compressed. There is a tour that's going by my lab where I can get into more detail about this technology. So uh, if you want to get on board that tour tomorrow, please come around and we can go into it with a bit more depth. Um, basically, our soldiers carry large loads for very long distances over days on end. Those loads can be in excess of two-thirds of their body weight. I don't know if you've carried a heavy backpack, but if you're carrying only two-thirds of your own body weight on your back, it is quite an effort. Um, what this load does is it effectively compresses your muscular skeletal system between the load and the ground your skeleton and your muscular skeletal system is being compressed all your joints your knee joints your vertebrae etc this causes fatigue mental and physical causes pain and it can cause injury to the soldiers we want to get our soldiers into battle in the best shape they possibly can. We want them mentally alert, physically able to do what they need to do when they enter into battle. And the, the burden of load carriage has been one that's been around for a very long time. However, the loads that we have now are, are just gradually increasing all the time. Technology for load carriage hasn't kept up with the load carriage burden. So the packs that are being used now are basically evolved designs from the 1960s. They've got better backpack frames, a little bit more of the weight is transferred to the hips, but essentially at least your lower limbs are being compressed by this very large load. Exoskeletons, and I hope most of you are familiar with exoskeletons, I won't go into too much detail of what they are, but exoskeletons have been touted as the solution for the load carriage problem for the soldiers. Unfortunately, that's not quite reality. When they tested the best as exoskeletons back in about 2009, what they found is that the energy to use and wear these exoskeletons increased the metabolic cost to the user by up to 60%. So yes, they could carry heavier loads, but at a very high energy cost to the user. They're very complex, they're very expensive, they weigh in excess of 25 kilos when you take into consideration there's a computer, there's a battery system, there's wiring, there's clutches in the knees, there's sensors in the feet, uh, there's motor power in the hips, very sophisticated equipment. Uh, a lot of effort has gone into making these things mimic the human skeleton so that we can walk with these things. But in essence what you have is you have a skeleton fighting against a skeleton and the body doesn't like that. It becomes an effort. We took a different approach. We didn't throw the exoskeletons out with the bathwater. We looked at it in a whole different uh, philosophy. The philosophy that we had was not to turn the soldier into a super soldier. Um, that's, that wasn't the aim. The aim was to reduce his load carriage burden. So we started to experiment with different architecture to exoskeletons. We looked at cables. We found that cables, high tensile wire cables, can hold in compression, uh, incredible loads. Uh, for instance, we did a little experiment with a few little wires um, that showed that a total diameter of 0.14 millimetres can support a load of about 5 kilograms. And that's the sort of thin wire that can be adapted to the body so that you can still walk with it, but if it's integrated up through the uniform and the equipment, it can support quite a large load. So we started out with a challenge with this idea of cables. The first thing that we needed to do is use a cable in an unfamiliar way. So instead of hanging a weight off the bottom of a cable, the weight is supported on top of the cable. So we had to work out how we could do that balancing act. Then we took that idea and we thought, well, how can we put this onto a user, onto a human? And then we crossed that challenge, we got to the challenge of, okay, we've got a system now which can support a load and it takes that weight from up here on the shoulders transfers it through these very thin wires down to an interface at the bottom of the shoe and takes around about two-thirds of the load off the soldier. But then the final challenge was how do you take that system then and allow them to walk with it so that they can do all their daily activities, locomotion, etc., while wearing this. So we're in the midst of that final challenge at the moment. We're 95% of the way there. We've successfully made 
uh, a concept demonstrator. That's not the current version. We've got the current version in the lab at the moment. But this particular one here, we carried a backpack load of 32 kilos um, quite successfully and it transferred two-thirds of that 32 kilos down to the soles of the feet to the ground. Um, there are some weird things that go on biomechanically. It has a little bit of effect on your walking. Uh, your centre of mass is still the same, so it has a little bit of a, a weird sensation in regards to uh, where your centre of mass is and you have the effect that you're not carrying as large a load as uh, you think you are. Um, and those little challenges we're working on now. It's very exciting. Uh, we're a long way down the track and uh, we hope that at least it will pioneer a solution that will uh, address this whole issue of load carriage. So uh, I'll speak to you at the end when we do the questions. Thank you.